Hey bag ladies and bag dudes. Today I'm gonna to be talking about Edge Coat, the perfect half square triangle block of the month. Allison Glass Road Trip Fabrics. The book review will be for Adventures in Foundation Paper Piecing and Design. I'll be demonstrating how to make a cork checkbook cover and there's a great giveaway at the end. I'm Sarah Lawson from Sew Sweetness. Thanks so much for joining me for Social Sunday, my weekly sewing chat. Hey everyone, happy Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me for Social Sunday. Um, congratulations to Chris. Her daughter was just married on Friday night. I see Susan's watching. Um, Clovis is also watching. I saw a lot of you chatting beforehand on the show, especially on YouTube. Um, Kimberly says we have snow here in Chicago. Yeah, we sure did. We didn't get a huge amount, nothing crazy, but um, just enough to shovel it off the sidewalk and off the driveways. Um, so I just wanted to let everyone know because I know many of you were asking in the Facebook group and in the chat before we started. Um, Michelle Graham had surgery and she's recovering. I heard from her a couple of times and uh, she's doing okay or at least as can be expected uh, for after surgery. So um, that's really great news. Um, I also wanted to wish Karen McFarland a very happy birthday. I saw beforehand uh, that she mentioned in the chat uh, before the show that it was her birthday. So happy birthday to you, Karen. Uh, before I get started, just a friendly reminder, just about everything that I talk about during Social Sunday are things that I've purchased myself. So these are not things that I'm getting paid to talk to you about, but cool things that I found that I'd like to share with you. And also everything that I'm scheduled to talk about, I link to in the description. So if you're interested in finding out more about any of the notions, fabrics, books, or projects that I talk about during Social Sunday, just check that link in the description and you can fi find out more information there. So. My favorite is always the notion of the week and I've been getting lots of requests lately to talk about a project called Edge Coat. Um, so I got a nifty little tool for applying the Edge Coat. I'm gonna jump over to the side camera and show you, I have some samples prepared and I'm also going to demonstrate live um, how to apply it to fabric. Okay, so I purchased the black Edge Coat, um, but as you can see, it's available in lots of different colors. Um, I'd like to recommend next time you're at the store, um, your local either big box store or Target, whatever you have nearby, check out the leather bags in the store or the fake leather bags and check out the edges of the bags and the straps especially. Likely they'll have some sort of similar coating to the edge coat. And this is just to, to coat and finish um, edges that can be cut and left raw, but it just gives a nice looking finish. And you can also use this product um, to repair any cracks or um, to refresh some store-bought bags that you have if you use store-bought bags. So before the show, I went ahead and prepped uh, two pieces of cork that I just sewed wrong sides together, sort of to sim simulate straps. And I cut out the fabric in two different colors. So this one's blue cork with um, like a metallic silver finish and this is more of a natural looking one. I'm not sure if Danny can zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, he's gonna zoom in just so I can show you the finishes up close. So um, as you can see the backing in this one is a black backing so the edge coat is not super noticeable but I think you'll be able to see it especially in this natural looking one. This is the edge coat, the black right here. That's the edge coat right there. So let me show you how to apply it to the fabric. So I'm gonna have Danny zoom out one more time for me. And I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my notebook um, just so I can protect my work surface from um, any, any leaks. So this is the Edge Coat bottle. And also I got this tool, it's called a die roller pen. Let me take it out of the package to show you. Basically it's just got a metal tip and it just rolls like that. It's really simple. It's not battery operated or anything. Um, and there's a few different brands. Um, this one is produced by Tandy Leather, um, but I noticed a few other ones on the internet as well. So I'm gonna just quickly coat both of these edges. Um, you can do more than one coat. I found that for my sample, one coat was sufficient. And also, if you'd like to use a, sand, a little bit of sandpaper on the edge um, before you coat it, um, I found it not necessary, but it just makes the edge a lot smoother. So I'm just gonna go ahead and dip this tool directly inside the jar of edge coat. And I found when I was making those initial samples, it wasn't really dripping, which was a good thing. It's not like a super messy thing to apply. And I'm just gonna roll this uh, die roller on the cut edge of the cork. And then you can obviously dip it dip it in the liquid as needed. 
and I'm just going to do the one coat over here and then just let it dry so an hour or two and it'll be dry so as you can see super fast and easy and you can touch up any areas that you missed and I'll demonstrate it on this blue cork again the backing for this one was black so not super noticeable but it just gives the edges uh, sort of a cohesive finish look so this has like a medium gloss finish you can apply another finish if you prefer matte or a really gloss finish but I felt like this was really adequate uh, for my purposes so you can use this again this is cork fabric you can use this on real leather faux leather um, even glitter vinyl whatever you'd like to use it on um, should be fine so again this is edge coat it comes in a lot of different colors but I found uh, for my purposes and just for multi-purpose and different colored fabrics um, black is is really fine okay so let me put these somewhere safe so I don't get uh, the drying edge coats anywhere on my desk and flip my outline back open um, so hope you enjoyed that demonstration on the edge coat I think next Sunday I'm going to be talking about OD coat which is another um, coat type word but um, serves a diff different definite different purpose so that'll be next Sunday for the OD coat so I sewed up a little quilt related project today I decided to participate in uh, block of the month so I purchased uh, the perfect half square triangle block of the month program and it uses a really cool template called the perfect half square triangle template so here's block one uh, which I just finished up today I used Allison glass stripey fabrics from her road trip fabric line and my background fabric I decided to be black so um, I decided to go with these stripey fabrics for a little bit of a challenge um, I had to really think before I started cutting out my fabrics and um, piecing together my half square triangles which if you're not familiar with half square triangles basically this is a half square triangle unit right here and because it's two triangles that form a square thus the half square triangle um, portion right there and um, yeah because I use the stripes I just had to pay extra careful attention but I'm really happy with how this turned out and I'm going to be using the same fabrics for all of the blocks um, Danny's going to put a photograph on the screen right now so this is um, the quilts that I'll be making for the block of the month program so I really fell in love with the design of the quilt and traditionally I'm not a fan of half square triangles however the really cool thing about this block of the month and like I said you could also purchase the perfect half square triangle template series separately I think it's uh, $5.99 to purchase separately but I feel like it's one of my most favorite quilt related inventions ever because um, normally if you're familiar with making these little half square triangle units um, you're making lots of tiny units at, at once and then pressing them open the beauty of the templates is that uh, you print out your templates for your finished size so in my case these were three inch uh, half square triangles and uh, the one piece of paper actually makes uh, for my size that I was working on eight of them at once and rather than cutting out your fabrics into lots of little pieces um, I, I actually cut out my fabrics to just about the size of a piece of paper so large pieces of fabric and I made eight of these little guys at once just from the two pieces of fabric sewn right sides together and there were instructions how to cut everything out but I made this whole block in less than an hour so super quick and I feel like it's a revolutionary way to, to sew half square triangles so if you're a quilter and if you do use half square triangles in some of your projects you might want to take a look at uh, the half square triangle templates again those are sold separately from the block of the month so if you're only interested in the templates but I thought they were super cool and I'm really happy with how my block came out um, all right so Danny's favorite part of the Sunday show we'd like to ask for all of the bag ladies and bag dudes to let us know in the comments so whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube go ahead and type bag lady or bag dude in the comment right now uh, we really love uh, the support I love glancing over at Danny's screen over here while we're doing our live shows and seeing all the bag lady and bag dude comments come through uh, we love the supportive community um, I feel like everybody really care genuinely cares for us.
other members of the group. Um, we like having people post. Um, and by the way, the link to the Facebook group is posted in the description. So if you're not already a member of the Facebook group, I hope you'll join us there. It's really wonderful seeing all of the photographs of the finished bags come through in the group. Um, you can post your photo of a Soul Sweetness project if you make one. Um, it's really great to see and read feedback from other members of the group. If people have questions, they post them in the group as well. So um, it's a great supportive community and thank you so much for being a part of that. All right, so new fabrics that I've added to my stash, um, including these stripey fabrics that I used in my block are designed by Allison Glass as part of her road trip fabric line. And I didn't buy the whole entire fabric line in bigger pieces, but I have uh, a little charm square pack. So I'm gonna jump over to the side camera just so you can get a taste of the fabrics, um, at least from my charm square pack. I know a five inch square is quite small, but um, I think you can, get a, an idea of the colors and the fabric. So I love the colors. Um, I love the um, sort of uh, sea foam or greenish teal in the fabric line. This is probably my most favorite fabric in this fabric line. And here's my, here's the stripey fabric that I use. So it's, it's not a solid stripe actually. It's kind of a stripe, but formed with little dots, which is pretty cool. And let me just go through the rest of the fabrics in my pack. So I was thinking, I because Violet's a really big fan of pre-cut fabrics like this. She actually likes the little two and a half inch squares, but I really got this pack for her because I thought she'd like piecing these little squares together to make um, a little quilt for herself or, or even a pillow. So I thought I'd see what she can come up with. She likes arranging the squares and then she likes sewing them together. And um, she has a pretty easy time of it if, if they're ready cut, especially, I think. Okay, so in this particular pack, there's two fabrics of, um, of each piece, so that's why I'm kind of thumbing through them as I move along. And Alison Glass has a lot of great monochromatic prints, which is what this is, so it's a, a base color with um, often white. She, she's known for doing a lot of uh, those type of monochromatic prints, of which I own, um, I think, all of them in my collection that she's come out with. And there's the other stripe fabric that I used in my, in my quilt block. All right, just a few more prints left. And again, these were designed by Allison Glass and the fabric line is called Road Trip. All right. All right, so I hope you've enjoyed that look at the Road Trip fabrics. And I have a question for you. Let me know in the comments, uh, what is your favorite road trip destination? So driving somewhere in the car, perhaps on vacation. I admit I'm not a super fan of uh, traveling by car, especially if it's many hours. Um, I get a little bit car sick at times. Violet definitely does. So he, living here in Chicago, a favorite um, vacation spot for many families that's close by is Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin Dells. Obviously, um, mostly during the summer because they're known for water parks, um, a lot of outdoor things. We've been there many times as a family and it's about, um, what do you say, Danny, three hours away from us here in Chicago. So we've been there a bunch of times. I think um, my plateau for having an enjoyable trip in the car is three hours and anywhere after that is uh, not as much fun. I think Danny would like to go in the car and travel all these different places, but uh, I'd, rather, I'd rather arrive by airplane. <laughs> I admit that. Um, so I also wanted to share with you, while this is not sewing related, I may eventually carry this information over to the sewing room. I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that yet. Uh, but I've been reading some books, and the author is Mary, Mary Kondo, and she also has um, a show on Netflix, which is kind of a newer show. Um, the, her first book is called The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, um, and her show on Netflix also has a similar name, and uh, she's from Japan. Um, while she has a translator on the show, at first I thought that would be a little bit... Uh, challenging to watch but I found that the show is super smooth and uh, she teaches people basically how to tidy up their homes and be happier have happier lives uh, by being tidy and so Danny's going to put a couple graphics on the screen of her what the covers of her books look look like so that's the first one the life-changing magic of tidying up her second book is called spark joy an illustrated masterclass on the art of organizing and tidying up and here's a graphic from her show tidying up with Marie 
condo. So I finished her first book two days ago. It's a really short read. Um, I read it on my Kindle and my Kindle suggested it had a read time of about two hours. So a short book. I'm in the middle of the second book. Um, I've watched um, almost all of the, the episodes on Netflix. Um, if you have Netflix and you've watched the show, I highly recommend if you plan on doing following her tidying up method that you at least read the first book before you get started because I feel like there's a lot of information in the first book that isn't quite relayed exactly um, in the TV shows because there's only a certain amount of time in the shows and I feel like there's more specific and thoughtful information um, that's uh, written down in the book. So I started the tidying up in our own home and Marie recommends that you start with uh, clothing. So she has uh, several steps. Clothing's number one. Books is number two on her list, followed by papers. And then the fourth step she calls kimono, which is um, kitchen, bathroom, garage, miscellaneous. So that's what falls under the kimono heading. And then the fifth and final step is um, keepsakes, so sentimental items. So we started off with step number one, clothing. I started off myself because I didn't want to force the rest of my family to follow along with these steps. So I thought, I'll just get started and um, maybe they'll see me um, and get inspired. And if not, then at least my things will be in order. So um, what Marie recommends is that you take all of your clothing from the entire house. So if you have clothing in multiple spots, if you have it in your bedroom and in a closet and in a drawer, if you have other items in another room in the house or in multiple places, she wants you to take all of the clothing and pile it in one spot. Um, uh, I piled mine on my bed. And she wants you to go through each item one at a time, hold it in your hands, and ask yourself if that item sparks joy, which means, um, in other words, if you love it, if you get a really good feeling in your stomach, if that happens to you, then you should keep that item. If not, you should put it in another pile and either donate it or uh, discard it. So if it's not in good condition, that would be discarding it, but most other items can be donated. So I, I went through my clothing, I felt like I kept, um, little less than half of the items that I had as far as clothing goes, um, which was oh, I was really happy about. And I actually found some items in my drawers that I didn't even realize that I had, which is um, a little bit embarrassing and also shocking at the same time. Um, so I was able to donate a lot of things, also shoes. I went through my shoes at the same time. And then um, the next day, uh, Violet came and asked me what I was doing. And so I sort of uh, shared with her, showed her how I was taking some, removing some clothes and then folding it according to Marie's uh, uh, folding methods and storing it in my drawer in a different way. So I used to stack my clothing in my drawer um, uh, vertically um, just in stacks. Her method is to fold it in a specific manner so your clothing forms a rectangle and sort of lay it out um, kind of like in a filing cabinet how you would lay things out. So Danny's going to put two photos on the screen of just two quick snapshots that I took from my drawer after I organized it. Um, so uh, that second shot was um, jeans in my drawer, jeans or pants. Believe it or not, my drawers are not huge. That drawer with the jeans, I was able to, to vertically fold 22 pairs of jeans. And I never would have been able to fit that many pairs of jeans in my drawers previously with my um, previous uh, folding and stacking method. But you can fit a whole lot more in your drawers by folding it according to her methods. and. Um, everything fit in my, into my drawers barely, but uh, previously I'm rather embarrassed to admit. Um, so I have a small closet and I just had that one set of drawers with the five drawers in it. I had overflow of clothes, um, huge, I, I would say hu three huge stacks of clothes that were in three different areas of the bedroom besides in my drawer. Now because of um, culling a lot of the clothes and folding them differently, I was able to fit everything inside. And now when I open my drawer, I don't even have to touch anything and I can see what items are in there and I can decide what I'd like to wear for the day. Uh, previously, I was sort of rifling through the pile and as I was rifling through, things were coming unfolded and it was a mess and I know not very many things were fitting because they were not folded nicely, they were a mess and with this new folding method, I'm able to fit a lot more. So uh, the rest of my family last night really got on board. I was really thankful Danny got on board with um, culling some items. Um, I'm not sure if he 100% got the whole idea of um, spark joy, but um, he got on board nonetheless. Uh, Violet was the most excited out of the, the rest, the three of them, but um, uh, William's, William's attempting 
Um, his, his folded clothes were more like sausages, but I know with practice he'll get better. And now when I look at the, their drawers, there's like hardly anything in there, whereas before you'd open their drawers and um, the, the drawers would get stuck because of all the clothes. So it's nice to have everything neatly folded. I, I definitely think we'll be able to keep up with this. And I told Violet next weekend we'll tackle the books um, slash stuffed animals because uh, they have the kids have a lot of books and tons of stuffed animals probably more than we need so I'm really looking forward to um, finishing those five steps and my friend Pat told me that the second book in particular would be helpful to me in regards to the sewing room so when I finish Marie's second book I'll let you know and um, hopefully I can get some change going in the sewing room as well so again the author of those two books was Marie Kondo and she also has a series on Netflix which I thought was absolutely wonderful and if you have Netflix check it out and if not um, check her two books her, check her two books out and you can possibly get them from the library as well so um, excuse me getting back to sewing related talk uh, my book review for tonight will be for a book called adventures in paper piecing and design so I'm gonna step over to the side camera and show you that book okay so this book is written by Sarah Elizabeth Sharp, and it's it's dealing with foundation paper piecing, which is sewing fabric to paper to produce intricate, intricate shapes, such as these really spiky plants on the front cover. So the really cool thing about this book, not only does it give you quilt patterns for foundation paper piecing and tell you how to, how to do foundation paper piecing if you've never done it before, but the basis for the book is explaining how you can design your own foundation paper piecing templates. So for example, um, well first let's get past the basics. So obviously she shows you um, with photographs and illustrations what exactly is foundation paper piecing and how to do it. So the basics. Um, the really cool thing, I guess I'm getting ahead of myself, um, uh, the cover quilt is for plant ladies. So she shows you um, through working through this pattern how to attempt a more detailed uh, design such as these plants. So when you're doing foundation paper piecing, you can probably see from the templates over here, there's a whole bunch of numbers on here. If you've not done it before, you sew the fabrics to paper in the order that the numbers fall. So um, that's why there's numbers all over here. It just, it, that's the guide for knowing when to add which, which piece of fabric when. Um, the best thing about this book though is, and let me skip ahead, she shares with you how to turn a photograph or a design into a foundation paper piece block, which is something I've always been curious about. I've not found any helpful resources so far online how to do that, but she shares with you um, using that photograph of the flower, how to turn it into a design on your own. So um, starting with the subject, either a photograph or a sketch, and then she shows you how to turn it break it down into the smaller segments so that you can actually make it into your template for sewing onto, which I thought was super cool. And here, here's what uh, she ended up with. Obviously your results will vary depending on how detailed that you want to get into your photo. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool. So there's other um, quilt patterns in the book um, and she presents them as exercises for practicing creating your own design. So she gives you design prompts. Um, so this particular section right here, she show, shares with you how to make a letter with foundation paper piecing. And if you've never done it before, you have to assemble the letter uh, backwards. So you want it to, to uh, look like a Z in real life. Well, you have to sew it um, so the wrong side's facing up. That's just how it goes because you're sewing it to the paper. Okay, so let me show you a couple other projects in the book. Um, I really love this one a lot. This one was made in Allison Glass Fabrics, which was that designer that I showed you um, previously. And I think Allison just showed that quilt on her social media this weekend too. So um, a little feather pin cushion, that's a good opportunity to practice using a smaller project. And then creatures or animals are also a fun thing uh, to foundation paper piece. You might even consider um, foundation paper piecing your pet. That would be a really cool project to see. Um, okay, so the octopus is there. Um, there's also um, an idea for foundation paper piecing, something that's not a square or a rectangle. So here's some triangles. These are fireflies. 
And then she talks about repeat designs. So if you want like an all over design like these jungle leaves, how to accomplish that, um, where the leaf will um, end up in four different blocks. And then my favorite and probably the most recognizable bit of foundation paper piecing is the double wedding ring quilt. Um, so all the templates are in the back of the book. Everything's really nicely explained through photographs and illustrations. And again, this is called Adventures in Paper Piecing and Design by Sarah Elizabeth Sharp. Okay, so um, if you enjoy our live shows, uh, if you enjoy my bag making videos or my sewing tutorial videos, I hope um, if you're watching on Facebook, um, if you'll hit the share button right now, share this sewing video with your other sewing friends on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not already subscribed to our YouTube channel, I hope you'll subscribe now and then you'll be notified um, shortly before we go on live or if we have new videos posted to the YouTube channel. Regardless, either if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, I hope you'll at least hit the like button, which is um, the little picture of the thumbs up button on your screen. The likes and shares and subscribes help us out so much. So thank you so much for doing that. So my demonstration for tonight is a super quick one, but I've gotten some requests for this in the past. It's for a cork checkbook cover. You can also make this in leather or vinyl. So I'm gonna pop over to the side camera and show you how to make it. Okay, so I do have a link in the description for printing out the template, which is just one piece of paper, so super easy. And you'll wanna measure either the one inch square or the four centimeter square to make sure that your template printed out at the correct size. So you'll go ahead and cut this out along the outside of the black lines. And you'll also need, in addition to cutting from your cork, one piece from um, the checkbook pattern piece right here, you'll need to cut two pocket pieces. And that's written on your page, but that'll be two pieces each, six and three quarters of an inch by three inches. So I went ahead and cut my pieces right here. Looks like, uh, here's, my, here's my third piece. And I decided to use like sort of a rainbow splatter cork fabric. So um, the checkbook, I'm gonna flip so that the fabric's wrong side facing me. And then, actually I'll, I'll place it like this, right side facing me. And then I'm gonna take the pocket piece and I'm gonna overlap the ends of the fabric by about an eighth of an inch. Just make sure it looks even. The reason that I'm having you overlap this is so that while we're sewing, if anything shifts at all, during the sewing process, it's super easy to trim and get everything exactly aligned. And I'm gonna do the same thing for, oh, sorry, that's a bit shiny. Um, should have picked a, a flatter color of the cork, certainly. All right, so I'm gonna pin these to the opposite side as well. And then I'll flip it over to show you what it looks like from this side. So you've got your two pocket pieces and this is the main piece with the curve. So you're just gonna go ahead and sew from this side of the fabric, an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric all the way around. And then I've gotten one over here that I sewed previously. And then you'll just go ahead and trim the pocket pieces so that they're even with your main piece. And because you had a little bit of overhang, you'll be able to, able to cut them so that they're exactly even. So this is just a quick 10 minute project, um, something to spice up your checkbook cover. You can even um, embroider a little design on if you'd like, since the sewing part was so quick. And then when you're finished, all you have to do is pop your, your checkbook in there and you're finished. Okay, so that's, that's the checkbook cover, it's that easy. 10 minutes and I'm finished. So I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. Um, I have a question for you. I know it's not super common anymore, but I'm curious if you, if you still use paper checks. I know I sure do. I do uh, pay a lot of my bills online, but um, certain vendors and certain places, I just really still have to write a check. So I'm curious about that. Let me know in the comments if you do use paper checks. All right, so uh, we're gonna have a giveaway near the end of the show. Before we get over to that giveaway, I'm gonna be answering some questions live. So if you have a question for me, go ahead and type that in the comments right now. Um, either a bag making related question, a question about a notion or tool. Um, Danny's gonna put some of your questions on the screen and I'll answer as many as I can live. I also wanted to announce the, the winner of last week's giveaway and that was Michelle 
Sakala. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. So congratulations to Michelle. I already heard back from Michelle uh, with her mailing address. So I'll be popping your prize in the mail for you. Um, again, congratulations, Michelle. And Danny, take it away. Um, hopefully you found some good questions uh, you can put on the screen. They have questions about it. Okay. Can you put the snow, get it wet? And how do you clean the tool after you apply oh, it? Oh, gr great colors? question. Okay, Danny said there were some questions regarding that edge coat. Um, he said uh, the first question that he saw um, that was asked several times was, um, can you get this edge wet after it's fully dried? Um, the um, recommendation on the package of the edge coat is that it is water resistant, so that's good news. Also, that tool, when I used it earlier, um, I just went in the bathroom um, and rinsed it under the sink and um, almost all of the dye came out. Um, from rinsing it, um, if you're a little unsure or you don't want to get any a chance of any dye in your sink, um, you could just take a little um, maybe plastic cup and kind of uh, swirl it around in there, kind of like a paintbrush. And if you'd rather, you could just dispose of that. Um, um, used water, um, maybe in your toilet, if you'd rather give it a, get, it, uh, get rid of it that way. Tammy says, um, how does the edge coat clean up with water? Um, yeah, I got some on my hands. Uh, I just washed with a bit of soap and water. Um, I got some on my hands earlier, I should clarify. And it washed off, so it didn't stain. Um, I would suggest um, having some paper down or some uh, maybe a cardboard box just so you are not using it directly on your kitchen counters or anything like that. But I didn't find it super messy. It wasn't um, as you probably saw from the demo, it wasn't dripping all over the place. So it was, uh, for the most part, contained, even though I was dealing with a liquid. So it was uh, rather nice to use, I thought. Roxy says, is cork washable or just wipe off clean only? So years ago and periodically through time, we have tested cork fabric, Danny and I, by putting it in the washing machine and in the dryer. Uh, it's possible, however, Cork is water resistant, so all you need to do really is just get a damp cloth and wipe it clean. And because it's water resistant, um, any dirt or residue that's gotten on there should wipe clean with a damp cloth. Um, is the dumpling pouch available as a PDF pattern? So that question was in regards to a project um, that I did in the last couple years for Sizzix, um, which is a die cutting machine. Uh, for the dumpling pouch in that project um, at this time is just exclusive to the Sizzix die. Unfortunately, I may come up uh, with uh, something slightly different in the future, but for now it's just available with the die. Gloria says, um, where did you purchase the edge coat solution along with the tool? So I actually linked to that in the, in the description. Um, I believe those links were on Amazon. Um, you can also find it at Tandy Leather. Um, you may be able to find the entire color line um, on the Edge Coat website, but Tandy Leather as well as Amazon, they just had a few select colors, um, basically the neutrals like black and brown, um, which uh, are apparently are the most popular colors. Tina says, would you consider doing a short tutorial on how to use the corner rounder template? I recently bought it and would love some direction on how to use it properly. Absolutely, I actually haven't done one for it so far, but I'll write myself a note and we'll get to that, get to that one soon. <laughs> Um, Frank says, uh, wool ironing board or steady buddy? So I actually have both. Um, what he, uh, Frank is talking about is an ironing surface. Um, let me grab, I actually have my steady buddy over here too. Let me grab both of them so that I can show you. I can show you the difference. Okay, so this is um, a wool mat right here. It's a half inch thick and this particular one is 17 inches by 17 inches. So this is um, what I'm currently using and using most often. Um, before I found out about the wool mats though, I have a, oops, I purchased a steady buddy, which, well, you could see my, my foam is starting to discolor a bit, but basically it's a wool, uh, a wooden board. Actually, it feels like two boards attached to each other covered by foam. So here's uh, the side view. This is not flexible like the, the wool mat is. Um, they're both good for using as a pressing surface, but what I really like about the wool, um, well, actually I should mention two things. Because this is foam covered um, wood, I feel like this is safer to use on uh, your tabletops, especially if your sewing surface is a wooden table. The wool mat, um, the steam from the iron can come through to the other side. So I have, um, what are these? Are these quartz countertops in here? We have in the sewing room quartz countertops, which were kind of leftovers from our when they did our kitchen. So that's what I have in here. So I'm not too bothered about any um, steam coming through the other side of uh, my wool pressing mat when I'm ironing. 
uh, if that's a concern for you, you can put um, maybe a towel underneath something of that, of that nature. Um, but the good thing about the wool is that uh, the way that it absorbs the heat, if you're pressing things like quilt blocks or even um, bag parts, um, it will heat up your block or your project more evenly and keep it warm a little bit longer, which I've definitely noticed from working on projects, even working on this uh, quilt block today. Um, I pressed the block and then I left it on the wool mat for a few minutes because I knew the wool mat would stay hotter longer, but um, the foam covered Steady Betty doesn't seem to absorb the heat in the same way, but uh, again, it's different. And I actually should mention, I'm almost embarrassed to show you because it's a little beat up, but I have the, the Steady Betty um, for my foot pedal. They make one actually specifically for a foot pedal. As you can see, mine is super beat up, but it does its purpose purpose basically it because it's covered in the foam it prevents my foot pedal from sliding around on the on the ground and um, I've been using this one for a few years so that's probably why it's so beat up but um, that's again this is the steady Betty but for a foot pedal okay um, Dawn says could you do a tutorial on using a metal zipper um, showing how to take out the teeth I actually have a video on this on the YouTube channel so um, I don't remember the exact title of the video, but I believe it's dealing with different types of zippers. But I talk about different zippers that I use for bag making, handbag zippers, number three zippers. I actually talk about the metal zippers in that particular video. And I also show you how to remove the metal teeth in that video. So check that out. Um, you can find that on my YouTube channel. Tina says, do you use a standard two and a half millimeter stitch length when sewing the cork fabric? So it depends on um, how many layers of things that I have under the machine. If I'm sewing straps with cork fabric, I tend to like to lengthen to um, three millimeters. Uh, for these particular samples, I just used two and a half millimeters just because it was two layers of fabric. Um, also when I'm top stitching a bag, um, because the layers tend to get thick toward the end when you're doing the final top stitching, I also like, like to lengthen to a three millimeters. Um, and I think that can also vary depending on machine. So you can always test um, on a scrap of fabric uh, before you do your top stitching or whatever else you're doing. Um, the reason for lengthening your stitch length, especially when you're dealing with different thicknesses, is that you don't want your stitches to run together and be super teeny tiny small. Um, you want it to look like act actual stitches and when your fabrics get thicker, that can happen. So that's why lengthening your stitch length will help you get a nice top stitch when you're dealing with lots of layers and not make it look like stitches that are all run together. Brenda says, hi Sarah, any interest in micro minikins, maybe small projects from a quilted fat quarter? Thanks. Um, so a lot of the projects, uh, I think majority, almost all of them from minikin season one could be made with a fat quarter. I think some of the exceptions were um, the Zeppelin pouch. I'm trying to think what else. Um, most of them though could be made with a fat quarter. One fat quarter for the exterior and one fat quarter for the lining. That's not the case with the Minikin Season 2, but um, it is the case with Minikin Season 1. Um, I came in late. What color edge coat do you use the most? Is the natural good for colors other than black? So um, just based on looking at bags in the store and seeing what they were doing, even with really bright colors like hot pink, um, what I was seeing in the store-bought finished bags was that they were using actually black coating. Um, I'm not saying they use ed edge coat exactly, but it's a similar coating. Um, I guess it's just your personal preference. If you like that black standing out, like I showed you uh, with this natural uh, cork fabric, that's black right there. Um, if you like that or if it doesn't bother you, um, black, but like I showed you right at the beginning of that demonstration with the ed co edge coat, they do have um, lots of different colors. They have a natural looking color as well. I believe I've seen in the past clear, so if you prefer the clear, um, I guess it's just your personal preference um, as far as that goes. Brenda says, I would like to make um, note covers. Would cutting the cork or leather a quarter of an inch larger than the notes work out okay? So I'm not sure if you meant a notebook cover um, or not. Um, I do have a free video for a composition notebook cover or um, also one for the quilters planner. Um, I would just suggest trying it out on a scrap of fabric. It doesn't have to be cork. In fact, I would save the cork for the ac actual project, but you can make um, a little test piece with a scrap of quilting cotton or, or something else really cheap um, before you move on to your um, actual fabric. And I found um, from going through that process with the composition notebooks that cutting it a certain amount larger doesn't necessarily always work out. Like cutting it a quarter of an inch larger might not necessarily work out as far as 
the book opening and closing and getting the um, front and back covers of the book inside the sleeve pockets. Um, again, I'm not sure um, if you meant like actual note cards or um, a notebook, but again, I would just use some quilting cotton, draw yourself a template on a piece of paper, test it out with the quilting cotton first, and then see how everything fits. And if you like it, then you can move on to your cork or leather. Um, Tamara says, I've used a magic eraser on my cork Baker Street bag for a couple smudges of dirt. Oh, that's a great idea, Tamara. I didn't even think about that magic eraser, but that magic eraser is really inexpensive and handy for so many different things. Um, Nilsa says, is cork good to use for embroidery, uh, for embroidering or design on it? Yes, um, especially if you're talking about machine embroidery. Um, many members of the Facebook group have embroidered um, on either cork or leather. Um, if you'd like some um, tips for working with cork or leather, I know they float it um, in their machine. Um, that's about as far as my knowledge on that goes. Um, but um, if you're a member of the Facebook group or you can join us over in there, um, you can always ask any questions like that. If you have questions embroidering on the cork, um, that's a great question to ask in the group. And there's lots of he helpful members that are always happy to help. Roxanne says, on the day trip wallet, is the foam cut a quarter of an inch smaller on all pieces? So that's a good question. And that's my little mistake when we did the video. Um, the short answer is, is it can be done both ways. So at clear, as you can see from my day trip wallet video, I did cut my foam the same size as my fabric. In the pattern instructions, I have you cut the foam a half inch smaller on all sides to reduce the bulk. The reason that I decided to do that is because I wanted uh, the project to be easier to be made on every single type of machine. Mine, mine's a more heavy duty machine, so my machine was able to handle the full size foam pieces, but to make it easier for everyone, um, I suggested in the pattern instructions to cut the foam um, a quarter of an inch smaller. So um, if you're unsure, I would go with that method. But um, like I said, as you saw in the video, I cut mine the same size and I finished my wallets okay. <laughs> Arlene says, where can we get that um, color cork from? So I'm not sure if you're talking, not sure which piece you're talking about, but this is the fawn. Maybe the rainbow. It's sort of a flat natural color. Um, this one is in the shop under the name Rainbow Splatter. And um, this one was blue with uh, metallic silver, if you liked this one. Um, Becky says, how can I get rid of the smell from the wool mat? It smells like um, sheep wet sheep, I think uh, Becky meant. Um, I, don't, I guess I've not noticed a smell with mine. However, that's probably because I use a starch alternative spray when I'm ironing things. And it's so funny because even though I'm working with bigger bag pieces, I find that um, my I don't have enough room in the sewing room to have my ironing board set up at all times. And so <laughs> I, I was cutting out fabric for two bags over the weekend and I was actually using this little mat for pressing all my pieces and it was completely fine. Um, but anyway, I use this um, starch alternative spray called Flatter. It comes unscented, but it also comes in different scents. And my two favorite scents are Fig, which is what this is, and they have Pineapple, which smells really good too. So while I'm pressing things, I'm spraying my mat, and that's probably why mine doesn't smell bad at all. Danny, does this mat smell bad? No? He says no. Um, so there's other starch sprays, but this is the one I use, and it's called Flatter. Um, Chris says, put one of those heat resistant sheets like for cookies or the Ranger one under the wool mat. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Um, that's a really good silicone, silicone mats. Um, that's a really good one. That's a really good tip. Thank you so much, Chris. Karen says, Sarah, do you have a backpack pattern that you offer with a tutorial? So I, d I have a couple of back, actually three backpack patterns, but so far only one of them has a video and that's the Cumberland backpack. Um, that's a great one. I've actually made, that's probably one of the patterns that I've made the most. I've made, I have my own personal Cumberland backpack. It comes in two different sizes. So I have for myself um, the large version and the small. My kids each have a small. Uh, we've used it in the past for going to Disney or if they're going to the park and they want to take um, a baseball or some pencils or crayons and a coloring book um, that fits in their little backpacks as well. So that's probably one of my most favorite bags to actually use. Um, and again, that's the Cumberland backpack. Brandy says, any tips for sewing fake leather fabrics? Even my Teflon foot is sticking. Um, I have seen actually people suggest in the, fa in the past to use, um, and you don't want to get this certainly down by your feed dogs, but if it's on top of your fabric, it should be fine. Um, Cornstarch um, to keep everything sliding along. I'm, I'm a little surprised your Teflon foot is not working out for you because mine always 
works like a champ, but you could also use your walking foot um, in place of the Teflon foot if the Teflon foot's not working for you. Um, have you ever used the fork method when fixing zippers? Um, I actually have a video on my YouTube channel for how to use a fork to get zipper heads on the zipper tape. So in case you missed that, you'll, you might wanna check that out. Um, Susan says, excuse me, <laughs> I use a piece of rubbery shelf liner from Dollar Tree for my sewing foot pedal. That's a good one too, and uh, Dollar Tree um, can't beat a dollar. That's a good idea. Thank you so much, Susan. Okay, Danny's calling that. That's it on the questions. So um, let's get over to the giveaway for tonight. The giveaway is, uh, I've been in a cork mood lately, so the giveaway for tonight is for six rolls of cork, and I'm gonna try to hold those up. So a mixture of solid colors as well as prints. And this one here on the end is one of my favorites. This is a, a fennel with some uh, red coloring in it. So six rolls of cork to one randomly drawn winner. I'll choose that winner at the end of the day this Saturday. All you have to do to enter the giveaway is answer this question in the comments, either on YouTube or Facebook. What's your favorite sandwich? So just let me know in the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, my favorite is tuna fish. Um, so good luck on the giveaway. Um, thanks. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Thank you for what? <laughs> Have a great week, everybody, and happy sewing. Bye, everybody. <laughs>